You know, I hate to say this, but I think it's entirely possible I might have a St. Francis book hoarding problem. It's not very Franciscan. Hi, welcome back to Catholic Mom and Daughter. I'm Jennifer with my daughter, Kate, and I really only have 16 books about St. Francis. I might have a problem. Maybe. Anyway, today we're talking fun, easy, and simple ways that you can celebrate the Feast of St. Francis at home. And I'm super excited because this year we found what I think is our favorite, best, most exciting resource about St. Francis ever, and it's this audio drama. So it's called Brother Francis, the Barefoot, the Barefoot Saint of Assisi. And it has five CDs, it's got several different narrators, and it really goes in depth into his life. Yeah, it had us hooked from the beginning. The sound effects, the music, everything about it, we just loved. I especially loved the part where his mother narrated. She loved him so much, and her heart just broke for him when he was sick, when he went to fight the Crusades, um, when he came back and he was just searching, when the town rejected him, when he lived in abject poverty. Um, just, it was beautifully done, her love and concern for him. So this is just a great resource. But I will say it's probably for older kids, maybe middle school on up. Definitely adults will like it too. Probably not for younger kids because there are some hard parts in it. St. Francis had a hard life and a lot of the picture books, rightfully so, just gloss over those unpleasant parts, um, but this doesn't. And so you definitely want to screen it before you would let like an elementary or younger kid listen to it. And this is put out by the Augustine Institute, but you can also find it on Audible and probably at a local library would have it as well. Yeah, our church library had it and that's where I found it and I'm so glad I did because we loved it, highly recommend. Okay, so when my kids were little, by this point in the school year, we had celebrated the Blessed Mother's birthday, then the Feast of the Archangels, and then by the time we got to St. Francis on October 4th, I was ready for just something very quick and very easy. So one of our favorite ways to celebrate this feast day was just to grab some animal crackers. Hello. Uh, and some picture books and sit on the couch and read about St. Francis. So animal crackers you can get at the grocery store, just grab a box and you're set. I like the frosted kind, but some people in our house like plain. Um, or both. Or both. Or both. <laughs> so, um, Trader Joe's is a really fun place to look because they have different animals. They have cats and they have fish. I think, and then I'm not sure what else, but if you have a Trader, they have everything. They have everything. So Trader Joe's, if you want to get exotic with your animal crackers, is a good place to look. So there are a million picture books out there about St. Francis of Assisi. So today we wanted to show you just our top pick for every age group. So you already saw the audio drama about St. Francis, and that's our top pick for high school and adults. But what about middle school? So St. Francis of Assisi, Messenger of Peace, is really good for middle school and or graphic novel fans. And it has really cool illustrations, obviously in the comic book type of format. And so this one's a really great one. Yeah, I really like that one. And for the older elementary and early middle school, I really like Francis and Claire. It's part of the vision book series. This one's by Helen Walker Homan. It shows the joy and the bubbly personality of St. Francis. Um, he just had a great sense of joy and love and life and fun. Um, St. Clair was really attracted to that part of his nature and it just you know, it led her into her beautiful vocation. So this is a great pick for that age. So for younger kids, we have The Song of Francis by Tommy DePaula, which is simple text, but obviously it's got, you know, really beautiful illustrations in it. So this one's a great one as well. It wouldn't be the Feast of St. Francis if you didn't have the blessing of the animals. 
Now, usually we go to church and have our animals blessed, but I don't think that it's happening this year because of COVID. But you can always at home round up your animals or your stuffed animals or your beanie babies or whatever you have and do the blessing of the animals at home. And for that, there's a really fun picture book called Bless All Creatures Here Below. I really like the beautiful illustrations that it has. Perfect for the blessing of the animals. So besides reading books and eating animal crackers, what else can you do for the Feast of St. Francis? You could make a bird feeder or feed the birds. Or you could give your dog a bath or take your dog for a walk. Or you could go out and spend some time in nature. That's a very Franciscan thing to do. Another thing that you might consider doing is praying for a Franciscan on the Feast of St. Francis. Maybe you know a Franciscan friar or a Franciscan priest who would appreciate your prayers. Or you could also hang out online with a Franciscan. There's several YouTube channels that are run by Franciscans, so you could stop in and watch some of their videos. Now we have a couple that we really like. If you have not met Father Mark Mary and the Franciscan Friars of the Renewal, then you are definitely in for a treat. We're going to link their YouTube channel down below, but they are a group of Franciscans who live in New York and they work with kids on the street who are in danger from drugs and uh, gang violence. And so they play basketball with these kids and they preach the gospel to them and they do a lot of good. What I really like about um, their videos is they show the joy of being a Franciscan. It's not, you know, doom and gloom and just you know, super holy all the time. Um, so I'm going to link their video that shows them playing basketball and singing and just hanging out. And it's a great video to show teenagers, especially ones who might be considering a vocation. And Father Casey Cole is a fairly newly ordained Franciscan priest as well. And he has a YouTube channel, Breaking in the Habit, and he has tons of really good videos on there. So we'll put a link down to his channel in the description box. So this year at our house, we decided to take on a special challenge for the Feast of St. Francis. So we have a St. Francis statue that we've had for several years. And when we moved a couple of years back, it kind of got mixed up in the chaos and got shuffled around and it never really found a proper place. So we decided this year we were going to unearth him and clean him up and give him a special place of honor in the yard, maybe make a St. Francis grotto. So this is what he looked like before pressure washing nice and green mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but then we cleaned him up and we put him out in the yard and this is what our grotto area looked like beforehand and this is what it looks like now so we did some research on pinterest and tried to find out what do you put in a saint francis grotto and as it turns out just anything <laughs> it's not like a merry garden where there are certain plants so anything goes for saint francis which is the franciscan way simple so I decided that I wanted pansies because they're so cheerful and I really enjoy them. So our grotto is not fancy, but we did clean and weed and we set St. Francis up and we put the pansies out there. And every time I go outside and see St. Francis out there, it makes my heart happy. And so I think that St. Francis is glad about that. I, I don't think he minds that it's not fancy. So anyway, that's our roundup of fun, easy, simple ways to celebrate the Feast of St. Francis. So we hope you enjoy them. We hope that it will give you some ideas and we'll see you next time on Catholic Mom and Daughter. Bye.